everyone, it's Jose, or the Seth Rokage, whatever the hell you want to call me, and today we're going to be doing something dangerous. We're going to be talking about the internet's favorite hyperbole, Dark Souls. But before we dive in, I just want to go to note that this isn't going to be a heavily edited video like some of the other video essay stuff that I've done in the past. Um, I think I kind of generally want to try to stick with maybe a bit more of a vlog format because this way I can actually just put my thoughts out into the ether in a timely manner for when I actually want to talk about things versus if I were to do video essay formats like the way I used to do or for every single sentence I was doing, um, you know, specific video edits to every single sentence so that it matched. And I think those are great videos because of that, but it just took way too long. I have a whole lot of topics I want to talk about. This is just a lot easier and I want to put my thoughts out there because I got a lot of stuff to say. So why the hell am I talking about Dark Souls? Why am I choosing to open up the can of worms of Dark Souls difficulty, discourse, whatever? Um, because I'm a dumbass, and instead of working on my backlog or getting to newer games I haven't played, uh, such as, like, Paranormous Sight, the, um, there's another detective game by the guy that made, uh, Phoenix Wright, there's Project Raincoat, I haven't touched that stuff. I'm, I'm just an idiot, and instead of working on my backlog, I just go back to shit I've played a million times, <laughs> um, because I have zero self-control. So I just dumped 20 hours into my latest Dark Souls replay. And I maybe slightly hate myself for it, but I had a good time, so it evens out. You don't need to be a hardcore gamer to know of the reputation that the Souls series has garnered over the years. They're known for being crushingly difficult, and that's exactly why they become as popular as they are. It's a market that, at the time, when Demon Souls first came out, nobody was really going for. They filled that niche, and that's exactly why people love them. And as a quick side note, let's not do the thing where we pretend that these games aren't hard. And I'm sure you can find plenty of people on Reddit, on Twitter, or even, God forbid, the fucking Steam forums, where they say, no, this game's actually incredibly easy if you actually have two fucking brain cells. Like, no, 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 dude. On the scale of fucking Piss Baby Easy to, you know, hard Dark Souls games, these these are on the... They're on obviously on one end of the spectrum. Any game can be quote-unquote, easy if you spend enough time really learning the ins and outs of it. But, you know, on the spectrum, let's not kid ourselves, these are on the harder end. But exactly why are these games hard? And I think we can kind of chalk it up to just a couple of things. There's stuff like you having low health, there's resource management, such as your healing items and stamina, enemies deal a massive amount of damage, and can combo you easily if, if you get a little bit too cocky, and checkpoints are far and few between. But the thing about these games is that, and I actually have to slightly agree <laughs> with the neckbeards out there that are claiming these games are easy, um, they aren't actually as hard as you think they are. It, it can be a daunting task to go into it when you've heard about the reputation that these games have, but honestly, it really just comes down to how patient you're willing to be. You're never required to remember complex combo inputs or chaining a multitude of weapons and spells like, at a blistering speed. It's not Devil May Cry. You don't have to chain combos. You don't have to get S ranks. It is not that kind of game in the slightest. And we'll get into like some of the smaller differences between FromSoft's games. But as far as the actual Dark Souls games are concerned, the combat is actually pretty slow, all things considered. Generally speaking, you're meant to bait enemies into attacking, so you can either dodge or block them before retaliating with your own attacks while maintaining your own stamina, because if you get too cocky and you swing too much, you're going to leave yourself completely open. That, or you could be a complete fucking nerd and just use spells to nuke a lot of bosses without ever getting close to them. That's, that's a valid option. Fuck books. Oh, no, books no, are no, for no, pussies. No, 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 no. Go get the gym. And this, this is all basically just to say, you can't just sprint at dudes and mash the attack button and hope for the best result. It's, it's not going to work. Most of your deaths are honestly just going to be caused due to the simple fact that you got impatient, you made a dumb mistake, you misjudged how many resources you had, and you know what? That's perfectly okay. Fucking up is part of the loop. Everyone does it. Everyone knows the pain. It's all good. You don't have to throw a pissy fit over the fact that you died a single time. And this is all to say that these games aren't mechanically difficult. Most of my playthroughs of the Dark Souls series and Elden Ring specifically have been entirely <laughs> comprised of blocking everything in sight with a big ass shield and finding little windows of opportunity to strike back. Whether that's using one hand 
for some slower damage or maybe getting a little bit riskier and dual wielding it to do some more damage if I think I have a bigger window of opportunity. So me personally, I'll admit, I stick to a basic bitch dad build for most of these games and you know what? It works. In Dark Souls, for example, I pick the default class, I start with a longsword, and instead of really experimenting with other things, I stick with that longsword to the very end of the game, I'll upgrade it to the max, I'll level up the stats that it's good for, and I'm good to go. And to be fair, this does get a bit more complicated in Bloodborne with its emphasis on dodging. You can't really block, although there is parrying. And Sekiro straight up tells you if you're not willing to parry, then you're just in for a bad time. You're not going to get far. You're not going to find great success. So those are maybe a little bit more of a um, reaction-based thing. Uh, there's less uh, versatility in those games compared to Dark Souls and Elden Ring. In the two latter cases, it really is more freeform about how you want to approach things. And even if you hit a brick wall in these games, you can always use a tried and true JRPG method of, you know, just grinding out a few levels, see if those little stat upgrades will get you over the hump. But honestly, this is never even required. You can go into boss battles completely underleveled, but if you know how to manage your resources, such as your stamina, you can get through it way easier than you could than someone else who was leveled up way higher than you. And the original Dark Souls still holds up to this day because of how every single inch of it was just meticulously designed. But just as a side note to go through my personal experience with the series, um, I have a bit of a weird history with FromSoft games in general. Uh, technically the first FromSoft game I played was 3D Dot Heroes. Um, I really wish that they would make that available on modern platforms. It's kind of stuck on PS3. I thought it was great. But as far as the Souls games are concerned, I played both Demons and Dark Souls back at their launch, thanks to my, at the time, brother-in-law. But I honestly didn't really think much of them at the time. I kind of dropped them after about two hours each and didn't go back to them for like years and years. It wasn't until Bloodborne that it actually like really clicked with me and I became obsessed with completing it. Maybe it was something about the fervor surrounding it at the time. Maybe it was the aesthetic, the speed. I don't know. It just clicked with me and that just compelled me to go back to the rest of the games. And the first one I did after that was actually Scholar of the First Sin, which is the expanded version of Dark Souls 2, which is, as far as I'm aware, it's considered harder than the original Dark Souls 2. After that, I went into Dark Souls 3, then I went all the way back to the original via the remaster, then went to Sekiro, and then the Demon Souls remake. And then after that, Elden Ring. So I've technically played all the games in mm, almost a chronological order, but the actual order that I finished them is a little bit all over the place, but that's okay. So I think it's safe to say that I love the hell out of the games, out of the series, but that isn't to say that there aren't some bullshit areas that will make you pull your hair out. And if you've played any of these games, you're probably cringing a little bit, getting some PTSD flashbacks, and you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, as far as Dark Souls 1 is concerned, in this last playthrough I did, I still don't care for Blight Town. I don't care for the Anor Orlando archers <laughs> on that tiny little walkway. Uh, I don't care for the Crystal Cave, although once you know what you're doing, it's fine. And I really don't care for... Tomb of the Giants. Even once you have the lantern, it still sucks. These areas are just plain bad, especially Blight Town. Oh my god. And somehow I always forget about the uh, entrance you can go to through the Valley of the Drakes. My dumb brain goes, oh, I beat the fucking Capra Demon. I can just walk straight on into, um, into Blight Town via the depths. Don't do that. But even with this aside, I'm probably going to keep the momentum I have going at the moment and go back and replay the entire series. Uh, I know I started with Dark Souls. I'll probably save Demon Souls for the end just because that's a remake, remaster, whatever, and that's going to look the best. But honestly, with each revisit, these games just keep getting easier and easier. You know, as you go back and use your mental map of the levels, letting muscle memory take over on bosses, you remember their attack patterns, etc., etc. That and just using prior knowledge such as uh, soft caps for your stats so that you actually get the most out of your levels actually make your life way, way easier. But let's go ahead and get back to the initial point, and that's that these games are what they are because of their difficulty. That is the entire point of these games. And let's just be honest with ourselves. When people say stuff like playing this game on an easy mode doesn't change the experience, that could not possibly be further from the truth. Every inch of the Souls games are designed around difficulty. And if you were to turn the knob down, you would fundamentally not be playing the game. You're better off just playing something else at that point. And don't get me wrong. 
I personally do not care if anyone were to play these games or any game for that matter on an easier mode. It does not affect me. It does not affect my personal experience with the way that I engage with them. So let me re-emphasize that. I do not care if people play games on an easier mode. You do you, okay? But what I am saying is that you are not being honest with yourself if you genuinely believe anything to the contrary in regards to Dark Souls' difficulty. And honestly, it sure as hell doesn't help that people wanting easier modes in these games take up disingenuous positions behind causes such as accessibility, which is its own issue. You can go to the Game Accessibility Guidelines website, which is conveniently located at GameAccessibilityGuidelines.com, and you can see the expansive list of suggestions to make games more approachable for people with disabilities. So here on the website, they kind of break it down into different categories. There's basic, intermediate, advanced, and you know, a full list of everything. With the bigger categories, uh, if we're going to take a look right here, there's motor, which is you know, control, mobility issues. There's cognitive, uh, such as thought, memory, processing information, uh, vision, and hearing, speech, and also just general stuff. And if we're just going to give a quick look, I'll read a couple from each one. You know, these are all down in like basic, intermediate, advanced for each one. So this is incredibly expansive. There's so many things that could be addressed. So some of the basic stuff for motor is allow controls to be remapped, ensure controls are as simple as possible, ensure that all areas of the user interface can be accessed using the same input method as a gameplay. Uh, for cognitive, there's uh, allow the game to be started without the need to navigate through multiple levels of menus. Use an easily readable default font size. That's a big one for me. That's eyesight, whatever. Uh, use simple, clear language, tutorials, vision, ensure no essential information is conveyed by a color alone. Under hearing is provide subtitles for all important speech. Uh, provide separate volume controls or mutes for effects. And, oh, here's a big one. Ensure no essential information is conveyed by sounds alone. This is, this is a big one. So I would fully implore you, if you're curious, to go to the website and go to any other kind of accessibility websites and deep dive into it. It's incredibly expansive. There's so much stuff that can still be done in the games industry, and I hope it does. I hope that every single game is accessible to everyone in this regard. The stance of accessibility pundits is to put people on an even playing field not to just turn the difficulty down because some people are, just to be honest, just bad at it. As a matter of fact, thanks to the industry's prior wide neglect of accessibility options, difficulty choices were often used as a makeshift crutch that never really addressed the core issues that the handicapped community desperately needed remedied. It was a shorthand, a shortcut, whatever you want to call it to try to fix the issue, but it never actually addressed any of the core issues. And it's a complicated subject for sure, which makes it all the more infuriating that people can't be honest when they're talking about this kind of stuff. Don't hide behind a cause that you don't actually care about. The people crying the loudest about this online don't actually give a shit about accessibility. And you can tell because the only thing they ever mention when talking about accessibility is difficulty. They don't bring up anything else. Hiding behind the cause, it's a lazy shorthand and explicitly dishonest if you stop to think about it for a single second. And if you say anything like this online in places such as Twitter, you're just going to get automatically labeled as an ableist. And you know what? These people can just fuck off. They're blatantly transparent with what they're doing. Don't give them any attention. It's like, if you don't want to play a game that is known for being hard, go play something else. It's the equivalent of me wanting to go watch a horror movie, but saying, yeah, I want to watch this, but I need all the horror aspects taken out of it. I, I fundamentally would not be watching the movie at that point. It's perfectly okay to not to be able to get into something or to admit that you're not good at it or willing to put in the time or effort necessary to get good at it. I'm not great at RTS games. I'm not good at racing games. I'm definitely not good at fighting games. And you know what? If I go into those games, it's not their fault if they want to put an easier mode in cool i would say that's not necessarily the point of those games to be hard but i can i can just say like hey i'm not good at this and you know what H having a sense of humility for these kinds of things goes a long way and people will respect you a hell of a lot more if you can just own up to stuff so that's it for the video i'm not looking to engage in an argument these are just my thoughts and you're more than welcome to agree or disagree have your own thoughts, which you can leave down below in the comments, wherever. Um, yeah, 
I think I'm going to stick with this format. I'm not dedicating any kind of specific schedule. Stuff goes up when it goes up, but thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.